Assalamu alaikum, my dear respected student. Today I am going to present here the second lecture of the alkene and alkyne reactions. And it is the part B. In this lecture, we will cover the electrophilic addition of bromine and chlorine to alkene, halohydrin formation, carbonide, oxidation of alkene, oxidative cleavage of alkene, electrophilic addition of bromine and chlorine to alkynes, and addition of hydrogen halide to alkyne. Okay, let's start with the electrophilic addition of bromine and chlorine to alkene. Uh, addition of hydrogen across a double bond is basically give you a vicinal dibromide. Now what happened? Uh, we have one example here. For example, here we have the cyclohexene. And in case of cyclohexene, uh, once we are going to add the bromine, it will add across the double bond to give you a racemic mixture because uh, from the central carbon is a chiral molecule. And similarly, if we are having basically a 1 to diphenyl ethene, and we are going to add the chlorine, we have basically 1 to dichloro diphenyl ethene. And, uh, it is basically, uh, if we are going to rotate this molecule, we have the same structure with the previous one. Here is the mechanism of the halogenation, the halogen of uh, uh, towards the double bond. Now what happened, once we are going to add the halogen across the double bond, first case, the pi electron attack on the halogen and establish a bond between pi electron and the halogen. Ultimately, uh, one of the halogen will be depart as a, uh, the halide ion. In this particular case, we have the bromide ion, and we have this basically a three-membered cycle uh, transition state. Later, uh, the bromide ion attack as a nucleophile to give you this vicinal dibromide. One more example, here we have uh, trans butene and we are going to add the, the, the bromine and we have basically a compound having uh, uh, added a two bromine across the double bond and we have uh, two R3S, two, three dibromobutane, a meso compound, this one and this one, they are the same compound. In reaction two, once we have the cis butene and we are going to add the bromine, we have a mixture of uh, a pair of enantiomer in which one uh, molecule contains two RR configuration while other contain the two SS configuration. And we have already discussed in the lecture that how we can get the configuration of R and SS molecule. Next is the halohydrin formation. The main difference between the halohydrin formation and the halogenation is the solvent. Once we are using the protic solvent, ultimately we have the halohydrin. And it is because of the addition of the OH and the X uh, across a double bond. X is the electrophile in this particular case. And it follows the Markovnikov rule. Here is the mechanism. And we have, in this case, uh, the cyclopentene uh, having the methyl over one carbon. And what happened in this case, the pi electrons serve as a nucleophile. And establish this uh, transition state in which we have a three-membered cyclic structure. Now what happened? Because of this unsymmetrical structure, it has one of the carbocation which is basically tertiary and while other we have the secondary carbocation. So this is more favorable structure. Uh, the water serves as a nucleophile. Instead of the bromide ion, water is more basic and it will attack on this carbocation to give you ultimately this halohydrin or in this particular case we have the bromohydrin compound. Over the other variation, because uh, if we replace the water molecule in uh, place of the alcohol, alcohol will serve as a nucleophile and ultimately will give you uh, the, the ether instead of the hydroxy group in the previous example, which I have already shown. Means, for example, in this case, we have a 2 methyl prop 1 in and we are going to add the bromine in uh, methanol. That in the first case, the bromine will be added over here and generating the carbocation over here. Then this carbocation will be attacked by the methanol as a nucleophile and ultimately will give you this ether compound. 
uh, another reaction the cyclopropane synthesis using the Simon Smith reaction. This reaction include basically a coupling of diiodomethane coupled with zinc and copper to give you diiodomethyl zinc iodide, which basically generate the carbon. Uh, the carbene. Now what happened? This carbene is basically uh, add across the double bond, and this reaction is highly steel specific, and it depends on the nature of the alkene. If alkene is trans, then we have the trans uh, three membered ring, and if alkene is cis, we have a cis uh, three membered uh, al uh, cyclic three membered cyclic ring. Next is the oxidation uh, and this formation of syn one to dihydroxylation using or uh, the uh, some oxidizing agent. For example, here we have in the, this case when alkene is being treated with one of the oxidizing agent, it will give you diode. The most common oxidizing reagent are KMnO4 under basic condition, which is basically formed in uh, in, uh, in water. Or we can use the osmium tetraoxide in pyridine. Then we can do the workup in sodium bisulfite. Okay, this reaction is basically uh, uh, occur in the cold condition, and ultimately KMnO4 from the five-member ring, which is a magnet ester. Same, the osmium tetraoxide reacts with the alkene to give you the osmate ester ring, which is ultimately cleaved by the basic hydrolysis. In this case, we have the sodium bisulfite and will give you the syn dihydroxyl compound. So we can just look over here that alkene when treated with KMnO4, ultimately we have a syn diode compound rather than the anti diode. Okay, in uh, one more example that we have a cyclopentene and once we treat it with the dilute KMnO4 under basic condition in cold at room temperature, or osmium tetraoxide in pyridine, then followed by the sodium bisulfide. In both cases, we have the cis diode. KMnO4, uh, if we compare the difference between KMnO4 and the osmium tetraoxide, KMnO4 usually gives a low yield, lower yield and possibly side products due to the overoxidation. While if we are using the osmium tetraoxide, usually give much higher yield. But the problem is the that the osmium tetraoxide is extremely toxic. Okay, what happened? Once we treat the alkene with the potassium permanganate in hot condition, we have generally the oxidative cleavage. And uh, if alkene is disubstituted, in this case, we have a trans and the cis alkene, and both are basically disubstituted. We ultimately have the corresponding carboxylic acid salt, which on treatment with the acidic product will give you the corresponding carboxylic acid, depending on the carbon uh, on both sides of the double bond. Another example, we have a 2-methyl prop vanine. Now, in this case, of course, we have a disubstituted alkene, but one alkene is carbon containing 2-methyl group, while other alkene contain a CH2 group. So the terminal alkene on treatment with KMnO4 under hot condition will, will convert into the carbon dioxide in, uh, in regardless of the formic acid. While the alkene carbon which is associated with, uh, with uh, two alkyl group will be converted into a keto compound. Another example in which we have a tri-substituted alkene, one carbon of alkene is uh, associated with two alkyl group like this one and this one and one carbon is associated with the one alkyl and we have one free hydrogen so once we treat with the KMnO4 under hot condition and then we do the workup ultimately the carbon of alkene which is basically a CH will convert into the carboxylic acid while the carbon of alkene which is basically associated with the two alkyl group will be converted into a keto compound okay Next example is, is the oxidative cleavage of alkene using ozone. Ozone is basically used to cleave a double bond, but uh, it basically avoids the overoxidation. And ultimately, uh, whatever type we have the alkene means monosubstituted or di or tri substituted alkene. Ultimately, we have, we have a carbonyl compound. It could be aldehyde or it could be ketone. Beside this, uh, we also use uh, zinc acetic acid or dimethyl sulfide or in some other cases the triphenyl phosphine as well. 
One example, for example, we have cyclopentene. Once we treat it with the ozone in zinc and acetic acid, this carbon-carbon uh, double bond will cleave and one of the carbon will be converted into a keto compound. In this particular case, because we have the hydrogen here, this will be aldehyde as well, and this carbon will be aldehyde as well. It means, for example, a uh, di substituted al al uh, uh, alkene will be converted into the aldehyde group. Similarly, here we have a tri substituted alkene. Now, what happened once we treat with the ozone and uh, treat with the dimethyl sulfide, the carbon, which is basically associated with the two alkyl group, will convert into the ketone, while the carbon, which is associated with the one alkyl group and having one free hydrogen will give you basically a corresponding aldehyde. Let's see the mechanism that how this oxidative cleavage is being proceed. It is basically a 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition reaction in which uh, one of the uh, pi bond serve as a nucleophile and attack over the oxygen of the ozone and the negative uh, uh, oxygen will attack as a nucleophile and establish a new bond between carbon and oxygen. Actually, this is also known as the primary ozonide or the initial ozonide and three oxygen in a row is a very highly unstable molecule. They will rearrange itself in a way that a carbon-oxygen double bond will be established and a bond, bond between oxygen oxygen will be cleaved to ultimately give you these two intermediates. Later, these two intermediate will again rejoin uh, with the one three dipolar cycloaddition reaction like in this way that one of the pi bond will attack on over this carbon this pi bond will shift it over here and the oxy anion will attack the nucleophile over this carbon to give you this secondary ozone in the next case this is also very uh, unstable intermediate but when we compare this uh, ozonide with the initial ozonide then it is somehow a stable one. Now, the next role is the uh, the reagent, which actually uh, remove this one of the additional oxygen. The use of this reagent having basically uh, the electrophilic and nucleophilic in nature, the uh, triphenylphosphine or zinc, or basically if we are using a dimethyl sulfide, all these three serve as the same case. The lone pair of uh, this phosphorus or the zinc, or basically if we are using sulfur, serve as a nucleophile while the empty orbital serve as a electrophile. Now in this particular, in particular case, the lone pair will attack on this oxygen while this carbon oxygen sigma bond will serve as a nucleophile. Ultimately, this oxygen will be shifted from here to this triphenylphosphine and a new bond between carbon and oxygen will be established while this carbon oxygen bond will be cleaved to give you a new bond between this carbon and oxygen. And ultimately, we have two carbonyl compound along with the triphenylphosphine. Uh, uh, now that's all for the reaction of alkene. Now we are going to start the reaction of alkyne. Uh, alkyne reactions are very similar, just like alkene. If you have done the reaction of alkene, alkyne reactions are much easier. First, for example, if we are treating or reacting uh, the alkyne with uh, one of the halogen in excess and using a dichloromethane as a solvent, both pi bond will cleave and uh, on both sides we have basically four halogen will be added. Uh, the specific case, for example, these are just to show you the step five. In the first step, two halogen will be added and uh, by the cleavage of a one pi bond to give you dihalo compound, which are anti to each other. And in the second case, uh, another pi bond will cleave to give you basically this uh, tetra substituted or tetrahalogenated compound. Okay, now addition of hydrogen halide uh, with some more example. If we, it is also follow the Markovnikov addition and we know that what is the Markovnikov addition? The rich get richer means the carbon having more hydrogen or the more number of uh, hydrogen on the either side that the, the, the electrophile or the hydrogen will be added towards this carbon, while the other part, the negative part will be added on the either side. In this particular case, this is a CH means this H will be added over here, while this X will be added over this carbon where we do not have any hydrogen. So ultimately, both of the pi bond will be cleaved to give you this uh, disubstituted or germinal dihalide compound. 
Okay, uh, as I mentioned uh, already that this alkyne uh, hydrogen halide addition is actually follows the Markovnikov rule and ultimately we have basically gem dibromide compound. So this is the mechanism that how basically alkyne being converted into a gem dihalide compound. In the first case, the pi lepton attack as a nucleophile over the hydrogen and the hydrogen is being added over one of the carbon which is already rich in hydrogen and we have a generation of the carbocation. While in the next case, uh, next step, the bromide ions serve as a nucleophile will, uh, and attack on the carbocation to give you this compound. Okay, now the second pi bond again serve as a nucleophile and one of the hydrogen will be added where we have already more hydrogen and we have this carbocation while this leaving bromide ion will attack as a nucleophile and it will be add on this carbocation. That's all uh, for the reaction of alkene and alkyne. We will be more, uh, you know, present the some other useful lectures soon. Till now. Bye.